Could we get someone to turn the lights on? Nobody's moving. Phil, it's just over there. Press any button that looks interesting. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Don't touch it again, please. Yeah, don't touch it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I have to be honest, so I, I went, I mean, you know, when you're, I went to five parties last week. Five parties. You should see my collection of Tupperware. Anyway, look, we're getting tired now. I can feel the audience waning, and so you should. You've been here a long time. Barry Noble, fantastic. Everybody's been wonderful today. Isn't that lovely? And uh, I mean, who, yeah, who would have expected it? I, I hate people with talent. Malcolm, we're going to run the Miami, if we may. This is something I did, and I think you'll find it very funny. It's only two minutes long, so bear with us. It's on both screens. And uh, we'll have a quick look at this. This is the tutu. Energizer Bunny arrested. Tell us about shooting the unit scene with uh, the lead director, Douglas Canfield. Now, uh, he had a very military mindset. He, he liked that attitude in his actors. But... Rothschild's regimentality was Douglas's uh, key word. He had decided that if units were going to be a major force in the Doctor Who story, that, you know, the word masculine, this sort of soldier attitude, he demanded it. And I remember, you know, the Brigadier and myself, how, because of the uniforms and the way the British public knew the military, yes, it's a very masculine outfit altogether. Mm. Working together with so many men on location, uh, what was that like working as a squad? Well, you know, I mean, we got on very well. I mean, we had no sort of secrets. I mean, there's nothing I can like, like divulge to you that would that would be sort of gossip worthy. No, um, you see. Well, you know, I mean, the odd thing. I mean, once work was over and the camera stopped running, I mean, some of us like to sort of do slightly unusual things because a, a hard day in the studio and things are a masculine character sometimes needs like a release, you know, so the art beer, uh, you know, maybe in the art part in England would be quite nice. Hmm. John Levine, thank you so much. Well, thank you, Charles. And, um, Absolutely marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a skirt! <laughs> Okay. Malcolm, I think my mic's gone down a little. Is it me? Could be me. Okay, one, two. Oh, there it is, back again. Well, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I went on behalf of Carolyn and uh, Derek from Temple Planet. It really has been a one. I know it's only Saturday now, uh, but you know, I can see you all beginning to get a bit. <laughs> it's a cheap music stand, that's what it is. I got it off a of barrier. <laughs> so look, really, I've got a few things here. I, I, really, I found these the other day, and I just thought they were kind of useful. We can't even finish the evening. It says here that Energizer, Energizer Buzzy was charged with battery, and um, uh, uh, what was it? it says here, yeah, the practice of safety always use tolerance. And another one here is a hangover is the wrath of grapes. Yes. <laughs> yes, these are not my gags, ladies and gentlemen. Thank God for that. Sea captains don't like crew cats. A successful diet is a triumph of mind over platter. Uh, gossip is someone with a great sense of rumor. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, all the very end of this Saturday night, are there any questions any of you would like to ask? Because I must say, I do respond to questions, and that makes me tell more jokes. Just for the last 10 minutes before you all go to bye byes. Like? Yes, Phil? I had a rumor about you feeding. Uh, well, yes, actually, well, actually, yes, I, uh, uh, maybe this is not quite the time, but when I was on the cruise liners, I noticed that this Western world of ours, where we were saying at the dinner table tonight, how we have all the food we need, all the booze we need, we have everything we need, and yet, we still complain. And when I was on the cruise liners, I was in the third world for two years, and what we've done in the third world is a bleeding nightmare. And I found a group of Indians called the Kuna Indians, K-O-O-N-A, and it was when I was a comedian on the cruise liners, and I noticed that Americans, are there any Americans in this room at all? Because I actually, I, I, I hate Texans. I don't like Texans. I've got a soft spot for Texans, actually. It's a swamp outside San Francisco. <laughs> and, um, you know. and uh, yeah, and, and what happened is I saw these, I was given a crew, a, a cabin, which is rare for, a, a, for an entertainer. And I looked out of my cabin hole one day, and there were 45 canoes filled with these Indians. And because we starve them, in other words, we don't bother feed them, they've all got rickets and polio. And it kind of broke my heart. So what I did is, as I've got quite a lot of mouth, we decided to go and wait, make war, or wage war, against the Americans and the Greeks. Now, the Greeks are a strange bunch, I have to say. And so what we did is we started stealing food from 
all the restaurants on the ship, and I had ten people, and we used to get the girls, the dancing girls, to put on their bikinis to distract, just like in an old war movie. All the Greeks were just looking all goggle-eyed, and we were stealing food by the bloody bucket load, right? Because they waste more food than you could feed half the world with every day. And I ended up, we got rope from the rope deck, and the only sad thing about this was that the Indians were so starving, and I don't know whether you know what rickets is, you young people, but your bones, re it's a dreadful bloody thing, it's awful. And um, anyway, eventually I was the ringleader, and of course I ended up getting a blame for it, but we ended up dropping food over the side of the boat, which was 85 feet down, to feed these Indians. Yeah. But the funny thing is, to see all the Greek crews watching the dancers dancing, getting their minds off it, that the trouble is you had to point uh, to, oh, this was a bottle of champagne, tell me, bless your heart. Not to be there, of God, what a lovely evening we've had. Yeah, anyway, long story is you fed these Indians, and it was just one of those wonderful things, and we saved about 80 lives, and it was just nice to grab something good out of something bad. So thank you, Phil, that was a lovely, well done. lovely question. Yeah, that's very nice. Now, I did have, I did have the video of the, the film of my ship, but the truth is, it's complicated. You. Uh, you don't have it there, Malcolm, it's on another, uh, on another thing. Well, look, because you enjoy watching videos, I'd like to close. Were any of you here on Friday when I did my piece Friday, just maybe a couple of you? Would you mind all if I showed, a lot of people have asked us to show the Barry Letts tribute, which is my finest piece of work. But also, Malcolm, I'd like to show the old ball first. You remember the demons? Uh, are you all as in love with the demons as we actors that were in it? And uh, what happened is I was invited back to old ball. Someone shout on the call. I went a day early, and I'd become a cameraman. I love shooting cameras. And so I filmed my own view of old ball when the demons were shot. And if Malcolm, when and if he's ready, and uh, thank you, Caroline, for the lights. Um, as soon as we're ready, we'll show it. And uh, this is just me holding the camera. We ad lib dialogue. Oh, dear. Yay! <laughs> Exactly the green, the John and Roger and